This video will highlight some pearls in performing difficult percutaneous access during PCNL. There are several points that I'm going to emphasize during this video. Foremost, you must have a plan when performing a PCNL and have a primary calyx that you want to target at the beginning of the procedure. Secondly, I would highly suggest you use air as your contrast agent as it highlights the posterior calyces when the patient is prone. Third, upper pole access is something that you should become facile with and not be fearful of. And finally, when you get into trouble, placing the ureteroscope into the kidney can often salvage a difficult situation. We utilize biplanar fluoroscopy in the bullseye technique to perform percutaneous renal access at our institution. We place the patient prone on a Jackson spine table, which allows full access and rotation of the C-arm around the patient's flank. We also position the patient with access to the urethra to allow retrograde installation of contrast through a catheter placed at the time of the procedure. We utilize the Cook 18-gauge percutaneous access needle to achieve our punctures, and a silica bar is placed on this to keep the operator's hands out of the x-ray beam. This needle allows an 035 or 038 wire to be placed directly into the kidney after access is achieved. Finally, you can see here that we've used air as our contrast agent, and bubbles in the syringe show appropriate access into the posterior aspect of the kidney. One of the keys to performing a PCNL is to have a primary site of access in mind before you start the procedure, but to have backup sites in mind if your initial access doesn't work. In general, you want to try to put your access through the point of maximal stone burden. When you're looking at the CT scan preoperatively, you want to find the patient's maximal stone burden and figure out which calyx, if you drew a line through it, would allow you to clear the most stone. In this particular case, a lower pole access would be the optimal place to enter in order to clear this large burden of stone from both the lower pole and the upper ureter. When we started to perform this procedure, however, it became obvious that the stone was stuck in a lower pole infundibulum, and even though access in the lower pole appeared ideal, we couldn't get a wire to go past the stone. With our primary access site being inaccessible, we then went on to a secondary site, which in this particular case was in an interpolar location. Even though we didn't plan to do this case through the interpolar calyx, this proved to be an excellent site to access the kidney, and we were able to render the patient stone free at the end of the procedure. I'd just like to highlight what an excellent agent air is to use for your contrast during PCNL. Not only does it float posteriorly to highlight the posterior calyces, it allows you to use less radiation because it's less dense than contrast. And finally, when you aspirate your syringe after access, it's obvious if you're in the right place if you've aspirated air. This final case highlights several other key pearls for PCNL. This patient came to me after an outside urologist had failed a PCNL through a lower pole approach and actually suggested she undergo a laparoscopic pyelolithotomy. As you can see on these CT images, her stone burden is clearly best accessed through an upper pole access. When we approached this case in the operating room, that was our initial plan to try to come in through the upper pole to clear her maximal burden of stone, as you can see on this scout image from the operating room. Our air pilogram also showed that the stone was readily situated in a posterior calyx. When we tried to access the kidney, though, we realized the stone was densely impacted in the upper pole and not only could we not get a wire to go past the stone, but we had contrast extravasate during some of our initial efforts at access. These are two situations that are very challenging to deal with during PCNL, and this is where utilizing the ureteroscope becomes critical. If you've got extravasation and you're utilizing fluoroscopy, often the only way you can rectify the situation is to place the ureteroscope into the kidney and try to perk onto the scope itself. The reason why this works is that the scope is denser than the contrast material and will usually show through even if you have extravasation. Also, you can directly see your needle puncturing the calyx of interest when you have the scope in, and you can also utilize the homium laser to clear out a stubborn calyx, especially if stone is impacted within it. 
you can see this patient has an excellent result at the end of the procedure, and even though we use the upper pole, she did not sustain a thoracic complication. So in summary, there are four key points from this video. Foremost, you need to have a plan when you do a PCNL. If your access fails, go to plan B. Secondly, use air. It's an excellent contrast agent for these procedures. Number three, if you get into trouble, put the ureteroscope in. It will often save the day. And last but not least, don't be afraid of the upper pole. Morbidity from thoracic complications is usually much less than most people think.